as if they take this second map against Orglis made you know pretty light work in the end of Orglis on train it took a while to get to that point but you know that's what we saw and we're now up on dust 2 where you know we didn't necessarily see one of the strongest performances from FM uh, earlier on in the day but you know maybe they faced it a little easier than than some you could suggest so it's going to be an interesting one how this one pans out and you know FM if they can find that extra gear and can play a little more aggressively and mix up their pace on the T side in particular, then maybe we can see this thing go 2-0. But it's an interesting prospect. I'm joined uh, once again by Brod. Uh, could be seeing the final map here, buddy. It's been a, a long old session, but been good to have you with us for the whole uh, time. How are you feeling about this one? Um, interested actually. I, 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 know, I think it's interesting with the fact that it is going to be potentially Orcus's final map. I love things like this when it's this is the map that is either you go to the final or you're out of the tournament because it's backing an animal into a corner, isn't it? The yeah. first map's sort of a bit less. They, you know, we can come back in the next map. This one is the pick of August. And they sort of have to win it. And unfortunately, they're not going to be starting off in the best of places as we do see Stan and Hudge G finding a couple of frags initially. Pulse is able to get one back, but it's not going to be good enough as already the frags come in. It's Rattlesnake left as the last man alive. And he's not long for the world. Yeah, and, and straight away we see FM, they go charging through into the tunnels. Who would have thought that? You know, more of those teams that tends to be a little more defensive, especially on their CT side. But they've gone for a little change of pace. They've picked up this first round. They're probably going to piggyback through to the next two because August didn't even have half a sniff of a plant there. And we see August making their move over towards the uh, B site potentially. So this is going to be interesting. You know, flash out to long to prevent any kind of counter flashes or fast pushes uh, out from the long area. But it's not going to come. And... You know, August, if they can get a plant, they can get themselves a potential AK buy ready for third round and, and make sure that this isn't too much of a thing. But you know, otherwise, FM, probably going to get 3-0. And then you know, maybe they can lock things down, get it to 4-0 and win the first buy versus buy. This is going to be interesting. And you know, the fact that FM picked it up on their CT side is you know, just adding more fuel to the fire. I mean, we'll just have to see um, just how this thing pans out. Minute and ten uh, left on the clock. And, you know, Orglis, even though they haven't got much in the way of weapons, aside from this uh, scout that Pulse has decided to go for, they are going for the uh, stack mid. And oh, Pulse might nail Rattlesnake in the back of the head. I don't think that was the case. But, you know, he's very close in some. He's taken two already. And they are swarming in. It seems like they've got no fear, FM, when they see Orglis committing to somewhere on mass. They are doing the same thing. They're charging in there. They're backing each other up, coming in for multiple angles. And they're you know, taking these August players on head on. Works when they've got the pistol versus pistol. They've done it now with SMGs against the pistols. And you know, it's been a good thing for them. They're helping to build their bankroll. And can they continue this on into the third round? Again, no stiffer a plant. Orgles have to eco this one. Yeah. Just tell you what that last round reminded me of a little bit. A feeding frenzy with piranhas, you know, when you're watching that geo, that sort of thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, they're just on you. Yeah, they, they were just swarming around, going absolutely nuts. And as you said, no fear whatsoever in the life of those pistols. I assume we're going to be seeing the same thing in this round, as once again, they have a fairly strong buy comparatively. There's going to be no armor whatsoever on the Orgless side. You've already said there's no plan, so they're going to have to tough it out for this round again. And they just have to hope they can hit those shots initially. PT is going to be managing to do that, but Hadji's already found one before he drops so it's going to be an even trade and realistically when they've already got the disadvantage with the weapons this heavily it won't be too difficult for fm to close the fat one wouldn't think and some a beautiful flash to start things off neil zinio finding one in the same time but pt seems to be the man with the damage this round he finds himself another and a third as well what is this guy doing p250 in hand no armor no nades no nothing and he still does this much damage. He still opens up the possibility of finding multiple weapons if he decided to push for them. And essentially gives his team um, that tiny little chance of winning, you know? He extends that chance just slightly. And now they can fall back for the bomb and actually take this situation as they see fit. Yeah, and I was thinking, well, how's FM's confidence going to be? And we're starting to see that. But, you know, it's already started to brim into overconfidence. They went one at a time when they didn't need to. 4v2 situation when, you know, it was just pistols left. And it's allowed PT to pick up, you know, two of his three frags that he's already got. And he's straight in there. Neil Zinia, okay, shut that plan down. Bomb drops. Not enough time really to get to the site and plant. And, you know, Neil Zinia shuts the dream down. But 
Yeah, just a, a sign that FM may be getting a little too aggressive and we are treading this super fine line that they've got to be careful of and you know, we're now into the first buy versus buy. So I guess the consolation is that FM don't have to make any decisions about that yet. They're going to go into their standard setup. You would think, uh, let's see, where's Neil Zinio going with that? Oh, he's going to be watching long uh, with that one. Full AK buy uh, from Orglis and we're going to go back into what is the standard way of Dusty being played out, you would think, with a bit of mid control. And uh, the CT's just going to sit in and wait for the opposition to make their first move. Oh, and this time, more heavily committed to short from the beginning as they chuck the smoke out directly from um, near T spawn. And then push four players up early on. Release is sort of chucking a little bit of distraction out mid, trying to keep them guessing about what's going on. So he's going to be smoking CT. But now they have two options. They can either follow that smoke out and try and do a, try and do a mid B split. Or they can push up short as a three man and try and get something started there. And it looks like the bomb is going to be heading more towards B. But they're going to try and sell the fake before they leave. And Rattlesnake, instead of selling the fake, just drops down. Mighty Max loses his life, but he continues to be alive. And he is going to be that presence coming in from mid now. Jumping through the window. Not going to be finding the man on site. Instead, going to be picking up Som as PT deals with Stan for him. But only two of them remain versus the three of FM who are going to be coming in on this retake. And they are going to be coming in hot. Two men from Tunnels. Pudge G from CT, and he has the eyes of a hawk, spots Rattlesnake out, puts a bullet through, and tells him, you do not want to be holding that angle, mate. PT now going to be dropped next, and Fry in the perfect position to deal with Rattlesnake. He comes around the corner, spots him, but can't react in time. Has to call it to his teammate, who is able to find it. So FM continue their tear. They find themselves this fourth round, but it is as close as it possibly could be. Yeah, it really is an expensive one. Uh, it's not the end of the world. They can still rebuy. Some of them have got uh, seven and a half grand sitting in their account, so they're okay. But uh, they don't want to keep on losing uh, in the way that they have. And instead of dropping, Stan's going for an ump, so a chance for him to pick up some kill bonus if he gets in close and just gotta go for the spray down. Maybe he's thinking that's going to help him out in an eco bash, but that eco bash is not coming. And Pulse, talk about coming in hot. He's doing exactly the same thing, and three of them are out for that one flash. Has maybe done enough, and oh, they're going to be ruining this opportunity. Neil Zinio takes down PT, who seems to be leading from the front and picking up frags. Mighty Max is able to drop out of long and, and get into mid, and they're trying again. They're still committing to this A, and Som, he's just got to find two headshots. He's got one. Can he get the second? Neil Zinio has a chance to do that instead, and does, but not before release. He's able to grab Som, so 2v1 it is. Mighty Max is down to low. Neil Zinio's down to half, and Stan still has that ump, so... Um, I think with my Max in the health that he's in of those two square off, Stan uh, does have the firepower to make it work. Uh, pause does come in from PT. I don't know what this is. Probably a tactical, I would suggest. Just want to make sure this doesn't run away from them too much. And, you know, their economy is not going to support them, I don't think. It's going to be scrubby if it does. I mean, that's the issue with FM at the moment, isn't it? They're losing far too many players on these rounds. Uh, whether it's preventable or not is a different argument, but they are still losing far too many players, and you've got to hope in this round at least. They managed to leave with both the players alive, and they should do. Mighty Max comes around the corner. No expectations of a CT being there, and has his head taken clean off there by Stan. So it is going to be Neil Zeno and him surviving through, and this is now the chance to build up a little bit of that economy back. You know, Orglus don't have a huge amount of money to work with. FM could pick up some SMGs on people. I'm expecting... Maybe an MP9 or an MP7 coming out. The UMP obviously going to be kept. And just shred through everybody on the Oculus side to try and build yourself back up. If not, make sure nobody dies. Those are your two options. You either try and build up that bank. That, well, you either try and build up that bank by gaining the money. Or by not losing anything from this point for a little while. But first it's going to be a pause. They have a little bit of time to think about it. And I am not sure. Do you know if that's a tactical, tactical or technical? Um, well, I don't think they've called it. I would suggest it would have been a, a tactical just with the timing of it, but maybe something has gone wrong and, you know... It always seems to be a tech pause, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. So we're just trying to find out uh, what the deal is uh, with that and how long this is going to be. And if it is going to be quite a long one, we will take a short break, but I don't think there's going to be any need for that just at this stage until we get a little more information. Uh, so FM, then, already got a one-map advantage and a 5-0 advantage here as well. Going to be facing off against the Tech-9, so you would expect the same kind of thing again. Hudge G going to get himself an AWP. And Dangerous no game. Utility. Yeah, exactly. 
dangerous, dangerous game going for an AWP against a pistol by. Uh, that's the that's the sort of thing where you sort of think to yourself, as somebody spectating, obviously he can't see what they've bought up, but you start to think to yourself, maybe you should have gone with an SMG this round. You know, invest the twelve hundred dollars, try and rack up a little bit more cash by like finding the frags with it, and if not, you've not lost too much. You can still buy the AWP in the next. And it's going to be a much better purchase because at the moment, if those tech nines can close the distance, he is almost, um, well, he's almost definitely going down as, as long as he doesn't hit five perfect shots in a row or any collaterals. But yes, have just got confirmation in. It is a tactical pause. So this is Orglis trying to get themselves back into the game and back in a position where they can start to pick up some rounds against FM. Well, let's see what they can uh, play from here. I guess maybe the AWP buy is a sign that they're thinking that August will be able to keep on buying because of loss bonus and they would be trying to force up and, and make sure that doesn't happen. Or it could just be you know, not thinking about the finances at all and just deciding that's how they want to play it. Who knows? But, you know, Hudson G is a vastly experienced player. Been around for uh, over a decade. I'm sure he knows what he's doing or not. We shall soon find out, and I guess it's going to take a minute and 45 seconds uh, at most for us to be able to get that information as Pulse, he's managed to work his way in, and you know, that orb ends up missing the shot, and I think he's had to drop himself into pit, and he has, he's got players swarming all around him, so, you know, for those pistols, this is dangerous, and he's in a tough spot, he flashed himself out, he's probably calling for help, and he does end up dropping that orb, which gets picked up in the pit, and that's where a couple of these August players have now landed, uh, Froy and Neil Zinio end up with a frag PT, though he's still got that orb, and Oh, this is another shutdown. PT with the AWP. Last man standing. He seems to be the one player on the Orgler side that isn't having too much problem picking up the frags. But Stan's going on completely blind. And he's going to uh, retrieve that AWP for Hudge G. Hand it back to him in the spawn. Say, so here you go, bro. That was lucky. And uh, yeah, there we go. Back into the hands of Hudge G. You know, for Orgler, uh, Rattlesnake does have an AWP in his hand. And they are going to be able to cobble this together. And you know, actually, double AWP setup coming in. Hudshi's going to be orping with his. Is he going to have any kind of challenge and how they're going to use this double up setup on the uh, terrorist side? That's going to be an interesting prospect. Nearly a collateral. I mean, how are they going to use the double up setup on the terrorist side? I think the answer is they're not. Um, <laughs> Pulse dealt with almost immediately. Rattlesnake left as the last map. Fortunately for him, it's not going to be such a bad situation after all. It is going to be a two versus two. I was looking a little bit better a second ago, though, before some managed to find the bomb the bomb carriers. That means now they have zero control of anything. Rattlesnake, I think, just utilizing his orb to make sure nobody can push in from mid and help bolster, bolster the numbers there in tunnels. Release should probably be working on finding the man that's down there. Instead, though, some decides to push out. He wants to leave, and that means that Rattlesnake... All he has to do now is wait for the player to come through, and Hudge G has to. There's no other option. He wants to make sure that they can't get to it. He wants to make sure they can't plant, because as soon as that bomb's down for him, it's basically game over. The 1v2 retake would have been not impossible, but almost there. So he makes his move, and unfortunately it doesn't work out, and that means that we do see Orglos find their first round. A little bit of a strange one. Probably not a repeatable round, but it is a round nonetheless, and maybe it will give them the confidence they need to push on from this point forward, and we're going to be finding out as soon as it is. It's going to be an altercation long to start things off, and unfortunately, it looks like FM might get the chance to reset them here, as that is just totally dominating. Yeah, too easy. Three bursts, a little flick, and it was pretty much like cutting down some bots in a, like an A-map type thing. Just a little too comfortable. You know, it was uh, set up by August being completely blind. I think uh, you know, August put the first flashes in. FM followed up with their own. And you know, it was FM that were just quicker uh, to come out of that flash. And Stan, he has got the chance to make a play on Pulse. He was uh, outgunned with a weapon, but it doesn't matter. It's a flawless victory. The reset button gets pushed. And FM take 7-1. So... You know, this is getting quite tough. You know, it varies again, Dust 2, how it plays. And, you know, we can shift around from team to team. But you would expect to put in a strong showing on your T side. You'd expect that FM are going to at least win out half on the CT side. Take it to 8-1. But from that position, you know, things start to build up on all of us now. They're already a map down. They lost to FM in comprehensive fashion just a few short weeks ago in the same competition in the group stages. You know, they've never really got their economy up and running. They haven't had too many chances to get uh, picks into the site. 
On Zombie out of lockdown. Yeah, he's taken one. They're all walking into the tunnels, but you know, there's crossfire coming in. They haven't got the firepower. What are they going to be able to do? Stan's got one. Zombie's got his third. And uh, Stan just cleans up. Another super easy round. And, you know, after that reset, what can they buy? Oh, it's going to be AKs and maybe a Galil. Scout up. Tech 9. It's yeah. Like a, yeah, wow. It's like a buy from Wilco, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. Oh, if anything, it's just, it's just a bit depressing, isn't it? You... They need to win some rounds soon. Obviously, as you're saying, it's a little bit T-sided, this map. It is marginal. Obviously, you're looking... Anything from sort of 9-6 to 8-7 going either way is acceptable on this map. It is something you can work your way back from. But the way things are going at the moment, it looks like we're going to be seeing FM much further ahead than that. Fry, again, manages to start the round off strong and actually takes out Pulse, one of the players with a weapon. That's one of the AKs out of contention. It's down to the other one. A tech nine, a galore, and a scout now to do the rest of the work. And you got to think, wherever they push, they're going to have trouble starting it off. Especially if they can't mid hit. Neil Zeno with the orc will be the first man out. And indeed, he does find a frag easily. Rattlesnake runs straight into his crosshairs. And there's nobody else there to support him. So it means that the rest of his team now have to try and make something work with even less. It seems like they're being picked in order of how strong their weapons are. Because every time, it's like a slightly more difficult... Well, it's like a slightly higher level of difficulty or something. It's just, okay, two AKs, one AK, no AKs, a scout, a galil, and a tech nine to, to fight against the flight of FM at this point. It just looks almost laughable. Yeah, and FM, they're grabbing the AKs. They want the one-shot headshot potential uh, to try and deal with these players as they come prowling through and, and maybe get some armor. But at this rate, it's tough to figure out where the armor's going to come from. With 15 seconds left to go, PT goes down. Stan's got two as he chases down release as well. And it's going to be a hunt for this final player who is Mighty Max. His position will be known. He was on super low HP and he is caught before the end of the timer. So FM take it to 9-1. Got a lot of the cojones on Neil Zinio as well. Drops a flash, comes out into mid while they're already looking to go mid to B. And, you know, August you know, maybe could have swarmed in the way that FM have been swarming over them like piranhas in the water, as you mentioned, Brod, not too long ago. But you know, they weren't able to do it. They just slowed up. Didn't chase him down, allowed him to pick up the frag, and you know, from then on, it's been you know, pretty much one-way traffic. And you know, who would have thought this? FM time to date haven't been looking anywhere near this confident. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed to see it. It just seems like against August they match up really well, and the August have no answer for him. Hudgy with the double, and Hudgy with his third. Now he can try and rack this one up. Stan, make sure that the uh, 5K is not going to be coming in with two of his own. FM take a 10-1. August, what are they doing with their buy? Well, again, they've got two players on three, three and a half K. It's going to be another scrub. It's definitely not going to be anything pleasant. Yeah, we're going to see more Glows coming out. Uh, I'm not quite sure what Rattlesnake's going for just yet, but he has a little bit of money left over after buying what he has. $650. Okay, my uh, sidebar was glitching apparently, so it's going to be a P250 for him. Definitely not the most favorable of buys, and again, it's a round they need to find. They can't really let it get any further than 10 by, otherwise it just looks like it's over, but release. The man with the orb, the man with potentially the strongest weapon on the Orgla side gets aggressive. He takes it up close, he tries to use it as a shotgun, and of course he finds one frag with it. But he's not going to be taking any more than that, and FM has started to do what they do so well. They're sectioning them off, they're making sure they can't push out anywhere, and if they do, they're going to be punishing them for it. Even if it means losing one of their own players... They are going to make sure there's a punishment waiting for them. They're going to make sure they trade effectively and continue to take these rounds. And at the moment, Neil Zinio is going to have an easy shot lined up. He sees Rattlesnake creeping into his crosshair. And of course, he's going to be hitting it. That, that gave me flashbacks of a Mafia film, to be honest. They just put them in a pit. Spray the bullets <laughs> down, close it all out, and leave PT as the last man alive. And he's going to try and avenge his friends. But I doubt it's going to be possible, and indeed it is, and Hudge G closes it out with a wonderful headshot and brings the FM to 11 rounds to 1. Yeah, and can someone get a strategy guide and send it to release his house after that push that you highlighted? Because I, I saw him pick up the orc kill, and I saw where he went down pushing through against Neil Zinio with the orc in hand, and I'm, I was just trying to work out why is he even in that position? And you know, 
start to see things like yeah, start to realise that uh, things aren't quite going to plan. Hudge G, he's getting aggressive again. This isn't normally in uh, FM's MO, but you know they've just found some liquid confidence from somewhere. And Som now he sprang down on Auglis. It's, uh, it, I'm starting to run out of words for this. Maybe that's what happens when you've been talking since 2 p.m. about Counter Strike. But you know, FM, are, they've produced a different level that we have seen from them before and against Auglis, but after their performances earlier, you wouldn't have expected it. And you know, when you see this, you're asking questions. How were they fighting through the lower bracket? I mean, I think it might just be what you said earlier, Mark. I think it might just be that these two teams particularly, um, or when these two teams play each other, are the FM shine. I'm not sure if that is the truth, but as you have been highlighting, against other opponents, they've not looked half this good. And Against Orglis, they're just so dominant. I mean, already in this round, two cracks come in. No worry there. Huge amounts of damage on release and PT, and they're not going to be able to get anything done without losing their lives. And they don't even seem worried. Even as Rattlesnake finds Hud's G, Hud G, there's some behind him ready to find the refrag. And then it's just release in pit, hiding away. No health on him, and everybody watching him, watching the pit rather, and waiting for him to try and take a peek. So they're completely ready to shut anything down that does come out of it. And. It means that we're going to be going into round 15 with FM having 13 on the board and Orglis having to scrape together what they can as a buyer. And that's going to include two scouts. Something you probably never want to be seeing for out, especially in the last round, especially in something that, or in a round rather, that Orglis need to win. This round, though, at least starts with a trade. They're not two men down. They're even, and they can work from this. They can try and put a second on the board. They can try and make it smooth it in the second half if they pick up that pistol. They have a chance, but as I talk about that, we do see Hud's G picking one up. Fortunately, there's a little bit of a trade coming in again, but it's it's up to Orglis now to make this one happen. They do have a disadvantage in weapons. They do have a disadvantage in men now. But they just need it. They need it so desperately. And it's the two scouts that are going to be trying to make it happen. And you know, they saw Hud's G cross into the pit. And you know, I don't know who he took out first, but one of the players went looking towards Long, completely ignored Hud's G. And whether he's hoping his teammate could go to barrel in and deal with it or you know, just shifted his brain into neutral, I don't know what it was. But you know, the plant has gone down. That's going to be 800 bucks in the account for the final round of the half. That doesn't matter. Som, oh wow, gets one. Flicks up to the second. It doesn't matter that it's probably uh, one of the longest range areas on the map where he's pulling those off. Just flicks up to the head. No messing around. 14-1. And this is going to be over in the pistol, isn't it? Was that spray oh. transfer? <laughs> it could have been, actually. It looked like he kind of flicked in the direction, but he might have just got lucky with it. I was going to say, that spray transfer from that, like, from that distance, that is beautifully done, especially with the new update. Um... As you said, this could be over in the pistol. Honestly, if Orglus don't come in hard on their CT pistol, then the game is as good as over. If FM pick this up, it's going to be a match point for them, and all they have to do then is complete an anti-eco. And already, the confidence on display. You see Orglus trying to get the push up mid, and FM are just stood there shooting at them with blocks from long range. Pulse, though, going to be coming up and trying to give them some sort of indication that maybe that confidence isn't well-deserved. Does manage to find the first. Does manage to put them at a man down disadvantage. And he's going to be sticking around to see who else he can find. Hudge G though, ready to do some damage of his own. Takes release down. And it's going to be trades back and forth at this point. Orglos just hanging on for dear life. Hoping they can find the frags. And actually doing a significantly better job of finding them than they managed at any point in the last half. So this could very well be their round. This could very well be the start of something but you've got to think when it's 14-1 at half time there's not much of a chance of the comeback happening to the extent that they actually end up winning no exactly and you know they might go for a bit of a force here somewhere i mean the plant would do it wouldn't it if they'd got a plant they probably would have forced straight up and tried to get it over with straight away even if they didn't end up winning the round and you, know, you maybe wouldn't put it past and here we go yet yeah, tech nines uh, upgraded pistols maybe across the board or you know, just Hud's G's gone for it. Maybe a little miscommunication. Oh, no. They are deciding with it. Maybe Hud's G's committed to that straight away and you know, had to talk the rest of the team into doing the same thing. But they are going for it and, you know, maybe roll in en masse. I mean, why would you change the form? Just go together as a unit, hit these guys hard and see what you can do. And you'll probably see it go to 15-2 uh, if uh, form is anything to go by. And there's an aggressive push up on the short PT. Why are you trying that? You've got the weapon advantage. No need to try and take these guys on head on. Don't try to play them at their own game if you like. And, you know, getting normally 
playing FM their own games to drag or get dragged, sorry, into a slower paced game, but it hasn't quite panned out this way. And looks like they're going to do okay, but Hudson G, he's got himself an M4, that's going to be helpful, and Neil Zinho's got himself up to the site, these two season campaigners, and when you're thinking UKCS, these two names are probably right up there in the top of the list as the people that you will think of first. Let's see if they can bring it home, and they make it 15-2. to two. Release with a scout, well... They're not going to show themselves to him, I don't think, or maybe they are. But Neil Zinio and Husky have got a frag apiece. Release last man. He's got to try and get onto the site. He has got a kit in hand, so he's got the time. But now Neil's just going to sit behind the box and wait him out, isn't he? Oh yeah, I think he heard the scouts, so he should know that all he has to do is avoid release on the push up, and release is going to continue trying for it. Such low health on Neil Zinio, and he manages to find it regardless. Three points of health, and he still clutches the round. He takes FM to match point. And potentially ends the game right there. Orglas, they're going to have nothing to work with in this one. And from what we've seen of these guys so far, scouts and pistols is not where they excel in terms of rounds. This should be FM's game at this point. Yeah, you would think so. That scout shot from release doesn't tag anyone, doesn't even get close, really. They jumped way above that, probably half an inch away from doing any kind of damage. Fry on the pre-fire, and Rattlesnake goes walking straight into that, and it's a scout release. What can he do? He needs two bites of the cherry, as is pretty much the way with that weapon, unless you get a jumping headshot, but uh, he is able to take those, and you know, FM maybe being a little too cocky, just sitting out and waiting. Hudge G with the spray down from the bottom of mid up onto short, doing some damage. Mighty Max is down to seven, release 45 points to held against three make that two now it's your time to shine release let's see what you got yeah this is gonna have to be one hell of a clutch he doesn't have a lot to work with he doesn't have a kit so as soon as this bomb goes down there is such a huge time run i mean he has the scout and the usp to work with pulls his knife out at the wrong moment and ends up missing his shot at finding stan instead he's gonna get flashed out and finished off with the mac 10 of all weapons for the final score to say 16-2 to fm